Word of Fribulator for today, where we trust for a word from within the Word. And sometimes we've heard it many times before, but today it might have just a deeper meaning for us. And hopefully it's going to meet us where we are today. So that word, defibrillator, comes from Ephesians 4. Then it, and there's many translations which I really, really enjoy. But we're going to go back a little bit. And uh, let's start off at verse 20. Okay, that's good. Verse 21. Okay. Uh, maybe even 20. But you did not so learn Christ. But you did not so learn Christ. Assuming that you have really heard him and been taught by him as all truth in Jesus embodied and personified in him, strip yourselves of your former nature, put off and discard your old renewed self, which, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lust and desires that spring from delusion. So get rid of your old life and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new nature, the regenerated self, created in God's image, godlike in true righteousness and holiness, therefore rejecting all falsity and being done now with it. Let everyone express the truth with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one body and members of one another. I mean, that's just kind of like nice and meaty and be transformed. You put on your new nature, get rid of the old one, which is characterized by corrupt lusts and desires and put on the new nature created in God's image. And then from there, it just jumps. Okay. Therefore, rejecting all falsity and be done with it now, let everyone express the truth with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one body and members of one another. One of another. And then verse 26, and this is the word we want to play with today. When angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury or indignation last until the sun goes down. Huh? So we're talking about all of this, and then it jumps to anger, which is an emotion. And let's ask ourselves that question. Does God get angry? Does he ever have wrath that follows that anger? Now, wrath is exasperation, your fury or indignation, like that, that wanting to make somebody pay for what's just happened. Sometimes it's, I need revenge. I need that person or somebody else to feel the pain that I've gone through. Have you ever felt that? And angry. Well, angry means feeling or showing anger. Indicative of proceeding from anger. Seeming to show anger or to threaten in an angry manner. And anger means a strong feeling of displeasure and usually of antagonism. To make somebody angry. Now, hmm. All of a sudden, that kind of comes to a place where it's saying, when angry. Other versions, it says, get angry, but do not sin. So here is an emotion which you are allowed to have. But if you're going to have this emotion, which is your exasperation, your fury, your indignation, is do not sin when you get angry. And the, the interpretation of that is, you know what? What are you going to do with your anger? So I understand that you're angry with that person and you want to retaliate against that person. But what are you going to do about it? As a child of God, you can't now go sin in that. How angry and heartbroken do you think David was when Saul was after him? Yet there he was. Saul was asleep. He had his knife with him. He could have killed Saul. He had justifications. And he chose not to. What did he do with his anger? You see, he took his anger and he used it to bring glory and honor to God. And to give us a wonderful indication where I will not touch God's anointed. doesn't matter where his relationship as Saul was with God. The fact is, there was a relationship. And David went, I'm not going to touch that. And how would you like me to serve that God? 
You see, when we get angry, it does bring up emotions. But those emotions can be pushed in the right direction. So let's say you do get angry with somebody and you want to get back at them. Well, the most wonderful thing that you can do, and they might not be happy with it, is to actually pray for them. You pray into their lives. Obviously, hurting people hurt people. They've hurt you. And, and I'm sorry that they did hurt you. And it wasn't right. And it was a really, really bad day. But if we're going to want to retaliate, you cannot sin in that. But you can retaliate in prayer. You can go sit down with the Father and saying, Lord, this is not a nice experience. What is it that you have me do that we can speak into this person's life? Now, when I'm speaking to you, I'm thinking, hold on a second. I had a bit of conflict over the weekend. And maybe it's God saying these people seriously need prayer. Some of them have children. They've got families. And if these are the manifestations of their emotions and their anger, isn't that sad for their families? Could that be transferred and they, they hurt some of their family members or they make a mistake and, and something happens to them? When it makes me angry, what is the Father trying to say? Because you see, nothing happens in our life without God's permission or God's commission. And sometimes anger, being angry for somebody maybe means that you actually care about them. Because if they meant nothing in your life, why are you so angry about it? So it's to look into our hearts and maybe the question should be, or I think the question should be, Father, is that you? And what is it you have me do? And we start off with prayer. So Father, I pray for a physical manifestation in their lives. In fact, let us pray together for that one person you're thinking about now. Now, it might even be an organization that's wrong to you. It might even be a, a institution or it might be just a friend or family member that have created this massive feeling inside of you, that exasperation. You just want to hit something. You just want to, you just want to tell somebody. And you know what? It can't even be there in the morning. Because it says, when angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury, your indignation last until the sun goes down. It means it can't be there in the morning. So you could put it to bed with prayer. So let's pick somebody that's really, really offended you. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to pray for the, for the people that offended me. Heavenly Father, I bring this person before you, Father, because it looks like you brought the person before me. And Father, I cannot be so arrogant to think that I'm the only one that counts. Every single person counts, Father, and it's your will that all should be saved. And Father, I bring these people before you right here, right now. And Father, I pray for a physical manifestation of your presence in their lives. Father, I pray that you do whatever is needed for them to get a fresh revelation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, that it brings them to a place that their hearts are so broken for Jesus that they confess him as Lord and Savior over their lives. Father, I thank you for your purpose and your destiny that you decided before time that Jesus died for over 2,000 years ago in their lives. And I pray for a physical manifestation of his purpose and his destiny. That, Father, that feel a personal conviction in their own lives, that they need to deal with the hurt in their lives, Father. And I pray for a healing and a wholeness to be restored back into their lives. I thank you for your grace and your mercy upon their lives, Father. But, Father, whatever it takes, help them. As your word says, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. And I pray, Father, that they willingly bow their knees and they confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. I thank you for this rescue plan, Father. And I thank you, Father, that in a moment of our anger, we just get reminded and say we cannot sin. But what we can do is we can pray. So we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.